Hey everybody, my name is Pat Flynn. Welcome to your YouTube Jam sh uh, session. We are about to get started. And uh, for those of you who are here watching live, first of all, thank you for joining me today. This will be a jam-packed hour. We're gonna talk about so much stuff to help you, whether you're getting started with YouTube for the first time, or if you have a channel already. In fact, if you are here live right now, let me know in the chat if you already have a YouTube channel that you've been working on. And feel free to share the name of it as well, just so we can all see who's here. Now, just because you have a um, username doesn't mean you have a channel, so that's why I wanna see who is in the room who has a YouTube channel. But either way, we have a ton of stuff to get through. So again, it's Monday, February 27th. This replay will be available uh, after this, of course, but I'm here to help you in today's world about how to work with YouTube. And that's a very important way of phrasing it, working with YouTube. You'll hear me talk about that quite often. Now, a lot of you might know me for my YouTube channel, my latest exper experiment, if you will, uh, Deep Pocket Monster. Let me know if you have or have come over from the world of Deep Pocket Monster. This is a YouTube channel I started in 2000 and uh, what was it, 2021. And we currently have 560, actually we just gained another thousand overnight, 563 or 64,000 subscribers and over 128 million views, which is pretty wild. But there's a lot of other channels that have started recently well that have also done well. This is one that I follow called Dad, How Do I? Because I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm not, you know, the most, uh, uh, I'm not the most handy of a person, if you will, when it comes to household things. Tech-wise, YouTube, I'm, I'm your man. But when it comes to house stuff, uh, I need some help from this guy. And it's really cool because this channel started during the pandemic where a lot of people were at home for a while, of course. And now with over 4 million views, uh, this is a very good search-based channel. So information, how to answer certain questions that a lot of people had during that time. 4 million subs and 20 million views. Next, this one I'm going to be talking about a lot. You'll notice that the thumbnails aren't the best, but there's something in particular that this person did, Brady Brandwood, in uh, I think it was October of 2021 that they did that skyrocketed their channel. They started in 2006. I don't know why I said the six. I think I'm, you know, anyway, 2006, and uh, they were going nowhere until something happened a year and a half ago, and we're going to talk about exactly what that was and why that's important to you because we want to follow the same kind of things. That's a cool thing. You can have had a YouTube channel for a very long time. And then finally, once you hit the formula and you figure it out, things can work really, really well. And then of course, a lot of you know me from this channel and my brand Smart Passive Income. The Pat Flynn YouTube channel has been around for a very long time, since 2009. And uh, as you can see, I've made a lot of mistakes and it's taken a very long time to get here. And then on my newest channel, we surpassed this within like a year and a half. So I've learned some stuff. A lot of people see the new channel and they're like, Pat, you're an overnight success on YouTube. Definitely not. I want to get that out of the way. This has been since 2009 since I've been on the platform, making mistakes, falling flat on my face, and then coming back. And I want to pass on a lot of that knowledge to you so you don't have to wait 12 years until you finally get some momentum on the platform. Now, I want to share with you um, my very, very first video. Now, I'm not gonna play it here, but this screen that you see right now is from the very first video, and it's a video that was published in 2009, and this screen that you see on here was here for like a minute of me just talking. It was, you go and listen to it or watch it, I'm very timid, um, it's boring, and I'm just, there's nothing happening on the screen, and so uh, I'll save that for you later because uh, I might lose a bunch of people after that. It's very embarrassing, but you know what? As my buddy John Lee Dumas once said, you've got to be a disaster before you become the master. And it's just, it's the truth. You talk to anybody who's successful on YouTube, unless they were happening to be one of those 0.01% of people who have that overnight success, um, which is not, again, usual, uh, they're going to tell you that it's a grind, that it takes a lot of hard work, and you have to learn a lot of things along the way. But again, that's why we're here, so we can fast forward that learning for you and not have to worry about any of that. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. We're just diving right in because we have a lot to talk about, like I said. I wish I could just like be here and hang out and chat with you, but this, I want to be one of the most valuable things you watch this year. Well, it's only February. Let's say in the last four years. I want this to be one of the most valuable things you've seen. So here's what we're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn about setting up your channel and specifically things that you might wanna do before you even actually record your first video. But even if you have recorded your first video already, that's okay. We're gonna talk about your channel, how to approach it, and the very first thing I do so you don't uh, choose the wrong direction, the best way to know how to make a channel that's worth subscribing to, and how YouTube's algorithm really works, 
and how to take advantage of that. You're gonna hear that word algorithm quite a bit. For those of you who are new to YouTube, that's essentially the formula YouTube uses to know who to shoot your video out to. And the truth is it's not your subscribers often. There are people, and you might be subscribed to channels, who come out with videos and you don't even see them. And that's because YouTube knows, based on people's search histories, profiles, etc., that there are better videos for them out there. So how do we, as YouTubers and creators, create videos that will get put in front of people? And here's the cool thing, even though that's kind of like, you know, like, wait, people who subscribe don't even see the videos sometimes? No. But that's also a good thing because people who aren't subscribed to you can definitely find you too. And you'll hear me talk about algorithm quite a bit here today. And it sounds very scary, but there is a certain way to think about it that makes it plain and simple. And we're going to talk about that today. Next, we're going to talk about your videos specifically. We're going to do a breakdown of what I like to call the click and stick strategy. The click and stick strategy. This is very, very important because you have two parts to it. The click, which is getting people to notice your video and click and start watching. And then the stick. How do we get people to stick around? If you can do those things, you're going to do very, very well. Next, how to generate titles and thumbnails that get people to click and how to hook people into your videos and the most important data that you can look at when it comes to your videos to make your videos even better. And then finally, we will talk about monetization a little bit. You have to unlock it on YouTube for ads. However, even if you don't do that, even with a few subscribers, you can still generate an income, not directly from YouTube, but indirectly by promoting other products as an affiliate or selling your own products or brand deals. We'll just kind of glaze over that a little bit, just so you know. Um, also, this is a little bit of a window inside of one of my courses, YouTube from scratch. Uh, this is our latest course actually that came out uh, inside of this smart passive income brand. And so I'm just going to share a lot of this with you. And I just want to be upfront with you as I always am. The very end, I will be talking about that. I'm going to be sharing a way to get into that program if you'd like. But either way, I want you to come away with this as one of the most valuable uh, sort of teaching lessons that you've ever seen on YouTube, uh, whether you get involved with that or not. So look out for that in the end. We have some fun things going on to help you even further. But for right now, let's dive into some myths because there are some myths about succeeding on YouTube. A lot of people think, myth number one, that you need super fancy equipment to succeed on YouTube. And the truth of, is, of the matter is no, you don't need super fancy equipment. The truth is, you need better stories. Better stories are better than better camera equipment. It's one of those things that I think a lot of us who do photography or videos, we often assume that the camera is what makes the shot, but it's actually the person and the approach and in the world of YouTube, the stories that you tell, the way you frame your videos that make it work, not necessarily the cameras. Now, obviously, if you have better camera equipment, better microphones, things like that, that will obviously help but it's not necessary. Case in point, this is that YouTube channel I shared earlier, Brady Brandwood. This is a video that he created. You might have seen this video. Look at the title, Keeping a Grocery Store Lobster as a Pet. And look at that back there. He's using an iPhone to shoot this thing. It's not the best camera quality in the world, but it's a really amazing story. Going to a grocery store, buying a lobster that one would normally cook in the pot, bringing it home and you know, rehabilitating it, raising it. And that story is amazing. And you'll notice here, that's Leon, Leon the Lobster. Let me know if you've caught wind of Leon the Lobster and also lower left-hand corner, pay attention to how many views this one video has, 18 or 19 million views, which is absolutely, absolutely wild. Uh, so no, you don't need fancy ca camera equipment. Next myth is you need huge spectacle. You need to go big. And this is something that, you know, Mr. Beast doesn't help with. I mean, he helps out a lot of the YouTube creators. He's helped me personally, but there's this beastification. Have you heard of that term? Beastification of YouTube, where it's like you gotta go big, you gotta you gotta do this giant thing that's gonna like wow people. And again, although that can absolutely work because you're wowing people, um, if you don't tell good stories behind it, there's just gonna be a few people who who you wow and not uh, a lot of others. So again, you don't have to go big in that way to make things work. And there are a lot of other people who do go big like that. There is Ryan Trahan. There is uh, these guys on the right-hand side, How Ridiculous, they go big. I mean, that's the name of their channel, How Ridiculous, right? But they're still fun to watch, but you can make videos that are fun to watch as well. Brady Brandwood, again, lobster guy. Now, you'll notice something funny about this. These are the videos that have to do with Leon the Lobster. He still has other videos that are in there, and there's a mistake or two that he's making here, but 
Look at the Leon the Lobster videos and how many views they have. People are infatuated with Leon the Lobster and that story. Millions of people. And then he comes out with a video about DIY aquarium chillers. And as you can see, the niche of the lobster has found him. Not him founding the lobster, but people who are interested in this. And uh, again, it's not a huge spectacle, but it's a good story for sure. Uh, Michelle Kerr is an amazing YouTuber who tells great stories by trying things. She tried the SWAT Academy. She tried 911 Dispatch. She tried Etiquette School. And all these things tell a story about things that we are often very curious about. Again, not huge spectacle, but a huge story. A story worth watching, right? Next, we have Charlie Marie. You might not know who this is, but this is a good friend of mine. She is a web uh, and software designer, like graphic designer. And she has an amazing tribe of people who follow her specifically because she's very open and honest about what it's like to work in that industry. So for many other people, it's like, well, I don't even know or even care. But for people who are in that industry, she provides a lot of real life advice on how to build a career and how to do that work and how to make sure you get paid and all that stuff. And she's got over 200,000 subscribers. Big shout out to Charlie. There's also, you know, the fishing community is really interesting. So I've been getting into fishing a lot. And I've, you know, just like I did when I went into Pokemon, I'm like noticing a bunch of things within the fishing community on YouTube. And there's really interesting things. The fact that you can do really well by finding your own lane, right? So let me, let me share with you the bass fishing community. This is Tactical Bassin. This is a fishing channel. Look how many subscribers. Almost half a million subscribers. But these guys go very detailed into specific lures. They talk about the different kinds of lures. They compare the lures. You can even see them in their thumbnail. Then there's this guy, Fish the Moment, who's more of a creator for people who own a bass boat, who don't know how to use the technology on their bass boat. He's got 136,000 subscribers, just specifically talking about bass fishing tactics while on a boat using electronics. Then there's this guy, Greg Blanchard. He's not only a bass fisherman, he's not only a um, tournament fisherman, but he also fishes on a kayak specifically. So now this year, just fun fact, I am buying a bass fishing kayak and I will be competing in tournaments. And this is why I've been nonstop watching Greg Blanchard's stuff because that's the kind of audience that I am in now. And now I'm watching a YouTuber who specifically has videos that are related to where I am in life and in, in, in the world of fishing at least. Myth number three, you need millions of subscribers. Uh, no. You don't need millions of subscribers. It would be great to have a million subscribers. I'm not gonna sort of deny that. But the truth is you can do really, really well with just a thousand true fans. If you focus on this idea of a thousand true fans, you can do extremely well. And the truth is because you you know who those people are, because you are creating videos for those people and you, you are so tuned into who it is your audience is, the truth is YouTube will do the job of helping you find even more people just like them and you'll have way more than a thousand fans. And you can do a lot with a thousand fans as far as building programs, coaching, even ad revenue can be high in certain industries with just a thousand true fans. So true fan is the important word there, obviously, because you're focusing on the experience of those people specifically, making them feel like they belong to something, making them feel heard and giving them some attention, right? So that's really important. Myth number four, it's too late to get started. Uh, this is definitely not true. Case in point, my good friend, Matt Wolf. Matt Wolf just started his channel not too long ago, and he's already got 100,000 subscribers. This is, I mean, he started months ago, and he creates videos about AI and using mid-journey to create some really cool thumb uh, images. By the way, this image here was created using AI, and uh, that was pretty cool. So thanks, Matt, for your tutorials. And he's had videos that have had millions of views. In fact, this is what he said recently. Hey, Pat, thanks so much. It means a ton to me. He reached out to me because we were just having a chat about his channel. I said, good job. He said, uh, I gained 90,000 subscribers in a single month. I went from getting 1,000 views a month to 4 million views a month. Mind-blowing. Now, many of you know that AI and such is a big topic right now, and so he definitely is catching wind on that, and he's doing extremely well. And you can see just January 2023 where he was and where he is now. So is it too late to get started? No, it's not. So this is, this is really important to know because a lot of us feel we're, we're behind or a lot of us feel like we need to catch up. I understand that. But there's also a way for you to get ahead on things and actually create videos and stories and tutorials and things that people are looking for right now. And again, if you do a good job of that, which we're going to talk about how to do today, YouTube will be like, oh, 
you created a great video. Let's send it to more people like that. And that's how you can build your audience and your tribe and all those kinds of things. So to finish up here with this section, yeah, anyone can do YouTube, but there's two ways to go about it. You can go, number one, the long, hard road like I did with years of mistakes and frustration, or number two, a shortcut, right? Knowing what works and less frustration, and that's why we're here today. Give me a number two if you agree that that's the route that you wanna take. Give me a number two in the chat, and we'll go from there because that's exactly why I'm here. Carthy says, oh my gosh, I follow him. That's cool. Yeah, Matt Wolf is awesome. He's, he's really good and, and he's just blown up right now, which is really amazing. All right, we wanna go the simple route. So give me a two. Here we go. We're diving right in, everybody. The first thing that you wanna do before you start a YouTube channel is not start a YouTube channel. That sounds kind of weird, but what do I mean by that? I mean, you wanna figure out who you're creating videos for first. This is extremely important. You wanna profile as much as possible the audience that you're creating videos for. And the more you understand about them, the better your time will be. Because those people, again, group together, YouTube groups them together, and if it's kind of all over the place, YouTube's gonna be confused. Well, who is this? channel four, how do I know what is coming and, and, and what might not be coming, right? Um, I often say this, you hear me even say this in the Pokemon space, the riches are in the niches. Find your lane and dive into it, right? One inch wide, one mile deep, and you can do some really amazing things. And if you're worried about, you know, this is very common, like, oh, I don't wanna be known as that person, start there and you can expand out. But what I often find is when people start niche, they stay niche because they're having such good results they're becoming more well-known much faster. There's less competition there. And you can go deeper with those people and truly build super fans out of that, which is really cool. So here's what your channel could be about. Any of these things, an interest, an expertise, an obsession, your work, your talent, journey, passion, struggle, curiosity, a goal that you might have and people kind of follow along or you're weird. And what I'm not calling you weird. Actually, I hope you're weird because being weird is what makes us unique, right? But what I mean by that is what's unique about you? Showcase that, show that off, and don't be afraid to be yourself. It's very important because you want to build a tribe of people who follow you for you, not because you rented out a mansion, you have Lamborghinis in, in your garage, and you claim you read a book every single day. Um, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. Here's where I made a mistake. When I started on YouTube in 2009 about the world of entrepreneurship, I was like, oh, I want to create videos for all entrepreneurs. But entrepreneurship is a very big industry, right? So I created all kinds of videos about all these kinds of things, affiliate marketing, email marketing, public speaking, video creation, podcasting, physical products, digital products, search engine optimization, and way more. And so what ended up happening was I was having trouble because I would come out with a video, for example, about podcasting and it would do really well. But then the next video would be about search engine optimization, which yes, a person who is a podcaster should know about that, but that's not why they subscribe. They subscribe because they're starting a podcast. They want help with podcasting. And it's funny because like Leon the Lobster, every time I create a podcasting video on this channel, it does really well. But when I try other things, it's hit or miss. And I have to work extra hard to tell YouTube, no, this is related to these other videos. And this works. And this is, this is useful for them. And so it's funny because of that, my views are mostly come and go. They're people who search for an answer or who get what they need and then leave because there's no reason to subscribe because they got what they needed. How can we create YouTube channels that people go from one video to the next, to the next? What's that called? That's called binge watching, right? How do we create a type of video or a series of videos? Or how does our channel begin to just tell a person that this is the kind of stuff we're gonna get? People don't subscribe because of the video they just watch. I think this is a, a common misconception. Cassandra's like, you are all over the place. Yes, I, I was definitely all over the place. People don't subscribe because of the video they just watched. They subscribe because of the videos they are hoping that are coming. Very important to understand, right? This is the idea of riches in their, or in the niches, right? So here is a channel, Clearview Taxes, right? Taxes, like how, how interesting can taxes be? People want to shy away from that, right? But during the pandemic, this gentleman created this channel to answer a lot of questions that we all had about the payroll protection program and certain... Um, you know, uh, injections of cash into the into the economy that we might or may not get uh, may or may not get access to. And he was there. And what I loved about this guy, let me know if you you watched him. He was just so real. In every video, he just seemed pissed off about the situation and angry. And you know what? That was relatable. And as a result, 
millions of views because he was answering exactly what people's questions were. And people subscribed because every video was just an update on what was happening and how to get some cash from the economy in the US at least, and all this kind of stuff, um, you know, stimulus stuff. That, that's the word I was looking for, right? So this, is, this was a, is a great example of somebody who just went all in on what people needed to know right now and did very, very well. And he's still doing really well. You want to be able to answer this question. My YouTube channel is different because blank, right? So if you already have a YouTube channel, I want you to ask yourself that question right now. And if that's difficult to answer, you have to figure out how and then incorporate into that videos, right? Not just say it in your videos, show it, display it, be the example of that, right? Everybody with me, give me a emoji if you're still with me. I know we're talking quite quickly. There's a replay after this, by the way, and thank you again for watching. We have nearly a thousand people in the room right now, which is great. But give me an emoji if you are with me still, because this is where we start to get into the nitty gritty, right? The nitty gritty. I'm not gonna do the gritty, but we are getting into the nitty gritty. Here is the, the truth. Follow other, or here's what you wanna do. Again, before you even start a YouTube channel, or if you have one already, you wanna do this. Follow other channels and watch other videos in your niche, right? Follow other channels, watch those videos, not because you're gonna copy them, but because you're gonna get inspired by them, because you're gonna see, okay, well, if they're there, I can be here. For example, when I got into the Pokemon space, I noticed all these amazing creators, PokeRev, who had the craziest collection ever. Could I ever compete with that? No way, I'm brand new to the community. There are people like SM Pratt, who is who are like the most knowledgeable people and who have been in the space for over 20 years. Can I compete with that? No way, it would be silly of me to try to create videos that have the same kind of information as, as him because I don't have access to that information like he does. So I had to find my way and understand, and that only came as a result of watching these other channels. Read the comments to see what people like and dislike. I was actually a part of a lot of live streams in the Pokemon space before I actually created my channel, which is super helpful because I got to see what people liked, what people disliked, what people wanted, what people felt were missing. And then use YouTube's engagement graph to see what parts of videos people rewatch. You might not know this is available, so I wanna share it with you right now. Let's go to Leon the Lobster. You'll notice here that in one of Leon the Lobster's videos, this doesn't happen with every video and it doesn't happen right away, but in your niche, find popular videos and look for those. You can actually see this on the timeline, both on mobile now and on your desktop. This is a signal that YouTube knows, because it's literally data, oh, people really love this part. They are watching this part again. So when you see this on another person's channel, that's a signal to you that, wow, okay, this particular audience really liked that. And if you are a creator and these are your own videos, you should definitely be looking at your own retention graphs. Uh, that's a signal for you to do more of that, right? That's one of the things that you need to learn. Do more of what's working and, and less of what's not. And sometimes, I mean, I know that sounds obvious, but sometimes we forget about that sometimes, right? Do more of what's working and less of what's not. Look at the retention graphs. I mean, look at that here. You can see which parts are replayed. And if you were to dive into this, you would see it's the close-up shots of Leon the Lobster in his, I almost said cage, in his aquarium, super, super macro shots using the iPhone. Again, not fancy camera equipment. And if I was Brady, I'd be like, okay, I'm gonna do more of that kind of shot in there and tell, tell more story, right? If you help YouTube succeed, YouTube will help you succeed. Thanks, Hotspot, I appreciate that. If you help YouTube succeed, YouTube will help you succeed. This is really important to understand because what does YouTube ultimately want? YouTube wants people to A, stay on the platform, B, watch as many videos as possible. So guess what? If you create videos that keep people watching, YouTube's gonna know that and go, I guess we gotta get more people to watch this video because it's keeping people on the platform better than these other people or better than these other videos, right? And that way it's a win-win situation. And if you approach it that way, it, it can be an amazing mutual beneficial relationship with YouTube versus a, why is the algorithm not liking me today? Why is this, this, this? Keep people on for longer, right? The way to win is to create videos that keep people on the platform right? Create videos that keep people on the platform. Or as Mr. Beast says, replace the word algorithm with audience, right? This is a very, very important. This is one of the 
biggest realizations I've had from Mr. Beast following him. I watch a lot of interviews where he's on. I'm always trying to learn from the best. Now, I'm not going to spend $2 million on a Squid Game studio today or ever, probably. Um, no, my brain's just like, oh, you know, maybe. No, okay. But whenever you say, oh, the algorithm's not helping me, uh, or like, what can I do for the algorithm? I want you to replace algorithm with the word audience because that's what the algorithm is trying to do for you. The algorithm's goal is to bring the right audience for the right videos, to show the right videos to the right audience. And so if you have this idea that like, oh, the algorithm's against me and it's not working, and, and you may have seen other creators say that before, I've even said that before, all that really means is you're not creating videos that your audience doesn't want to watch. That's really what it comes down to. The algorithm and the, the, the getting on the waves of YouTube is a byproduct of you serving your audience and creating videos that make them stay on the platform. That's it. If you can think about it that way, everything becomes much more simple. Everything. All right, let's get into now the more specific strategies. A two-prong strategy for how to win on YouTube, the click and stick strategy, okay? The click and stick strategy. So what is this? The click is obviously the first part of the equation to uh, videos. The click is the title and the thumbnail, right? The, these are the only two things people will see, whether it's on their homepage or after a search or in the recommendations on the side, on their app, on the desktop. The title and the thumbnail is all people see. That's all they have to work with before they watch any second of your video. And the truth is your videos might as well not even exist if you don't focus on the title and thumbnail. Unfortunately, this is just the way it works, right? So here's the secret. Start with the title. A lot of us, and this was me for over a decade, created videos that were good ideas. Oh, I think my audience might want this. Okay, let's go film the thing. And then let's figure out a title for it. And the truth is you're going to be trying to maybe put a square peg in a round hole when you do that. Because the title, you, you'll, you'll either be too clickbaity because you want those views and then the video doesn't actually support that. Or it's just going to be a disconnect. And again, if people start watching your video and click off, YouTube knows that that happens. So why would they send your video to more people? You're not helping them, right? But when the title and the thumbnail match and tell a little bit of a story or bring some curiosity or interest, that's when you can get clicks. So a big realization is starting with a title. If the title of your video is not interesting enough for you to potentially click on or you share it with some of your audience or super fans and it's not even of interest to them, don't film that video. Find a way to create a title around that or move on to something else huge realization. I mean, even writing blog posts and emails, I would write the thing and then figure out a subject line or title. So much easier on YouTube to win if you start with the title first. And there's a line, obviously, you get really clickbaity, but honestly, you need to be a little bit, you need to capture people's attention. That's the truth. But if you don't fulfill that promise, that's when it becomes a problem. That's when it's literally clickbait and you're not actually delivering on the promise or you're telling something that's the opposite of what, why people clicked versus kind of clickbaity but then you deliver on that, okay, now you've done people a favor because you've gotten their attention and then delivered on that promise, right? So here is Brady. Again, this is the Leon the Lobster guy. These are some of the videos that he was coming out with before. I mean, rebuilding a KX125 engine completely uh, on the Koi farm. Like, those aren't really that interesting of title and thumbnails, right? And even on the Koi farm one there on the right. It's like the white words are blending with the white koi behind. But then keeping a grocery store lobster as a pet. And the thumbnail probably could have been included. But I think that blue, that blue rubber band on that claw was so important to this video. Because that symbolizes or signifies that this is a grocery lobster pet. Right? But then the, it like, how can you not click on this? The idea of buying a grocery store lobster and keeping it as a pet. First of all, a lobster as a pet. But a grocery store lobster as a pet, how, why, what, what's going on? I have to click on that. And so did, eight, uh, you know, 18 million other people said the same thing, right? So I want to do a little quiz with you. For an entrepreneurial audience, here are four different title options for a video that I created. And I want you to tell me which one kind of intrigues you or thinks intrigues 
an entrepreneurial audience the most? So we're going to start with this. A, this question helps me live a better life. B, the one question you need to ask yourself to succeed. C, how Tim Ferriss changed my life with literally one question. D, life-changing advice that I use to find success. So which one of these, A, B, C, or D, do you think is the most intriguing to an entrepreneurial audience? I'm gonna give you a second. It was C, how Tim Ferriss changed my life with literally one question. Why did this one work best? It's because in the entrepreneurial world, A, Tim Ferriss is a very recognizable name. Did Tim Ferriss actually ask me this question? He did, but it was in like an email and it was kind of like a soft question. It wasn't like a hard ask of me, but look how it's positioned. Look at the thumbnail. It's as if we're in the same room together and he's kind of smiling. I found this thumbnail image of Tim Ferriss and it was perfect because it looks like he just asked me the question. And then of course my face there with the reaction, I use Canva to remove the background. He was right. How can you not click on this if you are an entrepreneur and you're, you're kind of struggling and you're wondering what happened, right? So this video, as you can see, had over 100,000 views in 10 months. This was one of the higher performing, highest velocity videos in a while on my Pat Flynn channel. Let's do one for average Pokemon collectors. A, five tips for storing your Pokemon cards. B, the correct way to store Pokemon cards in a binder. C, this is how I store my Pokemon cards in a binder to last longer. So let me know which one you think is best. Now, Dan pointed out something with that last one with Tim Ferriss, clickbait thumbnail. Yes. It's my job to capture people's attention. If I have information that can help save a person or is so useful to them, I have to get attention in some way, Dan. And so I am going to be a little clickbaity but for the purpose of delivering on that promise and blowing people's minds, right? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, uh, somebody, there was a channel called Veritasium who coined this term legit bait. He actually made that word up, but I kind of like that, legit bait. You're legit putting bait out there so that you can actually serve people, not to trick people. There are people who do what we traditionally know as clickbaiting, and that's bad because nobody feels happy after watching that video. I want people to, when they watch your video, after some sort of intriguing reason to click, to go, thank you so much for sharing this video with me. It was super, it was like, I'm so glad I caught it, right? That's how you want people to react. Anyway, let's go back to this exercise here. Um, it's B, the correct way to store Pokemon cards in the binder, right? An average collector, we go back to the, to the previous one, an average collector might not be interested in storing Pokemon cards. They might not have a lot of Pokemon cards specifically. There's no mention of a binder in there. And five tips, do people think they need five tips or can there be one way to do it? I don't know. C, this is how I store my Pokemon cards in a binder. I'm not known as a Pokemon binder expert. So there is no authority in me saying this is how I do it because everybody stores Pokemon cards in a binder and it's kind of, there's only one way to do it, right? Well, not really. And this is why B works really well. B informs or actually implies that there's a wrong way to do it. And look at that thumbnail. In this thumbnail, the size of the card is blown up. It's much bigger than like a slot for the binder. But this card is a very recognizable card to average Pokemon collectors. And the text in there says you're storing it wrong to support the idea that, yeah, there is an actual wrong way to do this. And this video about Pokemon card storage has seen 700,000 views in just three months, right? Now, I'm not saying, Brent, that all five tips of videos are bad. I'm just saying maybe there's a way to more creatively get people interested in it, if that makes sense. All right. In many cases, your great title, once you come up with the title first, actually changes the way you film the video, right? Here was an original idea for a video that I created, how to package and ship your cards without damage, right? So. This is something that a lot of us in the Pokemon world do. We buy, we sell, we ship cards. We're interested in that, right? But a title like how to package and ship your cards without damage, unless you're in the middle of doing that for the first time and you've never done it before, that's not really an interesting video, is it? Versus what we ended up doing was which shipping service damages my Pokemon cards the most? Yes, I punched the 
crap out of that box in the corner to make it exaggerative, right? When you watch the video, it's not actually damaged that bad. But not one out of the half a million people who have now seen this video have said, hey, the box that was actually damaged, which there was a box that was actually damaged, by the way, um, was not the same one that matched the title and thumbnail. You know what I'm getting? Thank you for sharing this video with me. I appreciate you revealing the truth about which company actually, you know, was the worst. All these things, right? What I actually ended up doing in this one was also just doing a test. Packaging the three same things in three different boxes and seeing which company actually... Now, whether you're shipping something or not, you are now curious about what happens, right? Curiosity. Create curiosity for the viewer. Exactly, right? Bill says, do people really spend this much time on Pokemon cards? Oh, Bill, you have no idea. Anybody in the Pokemon space who's here, you, you're welcome to answer that question for Bill because I know I'm kind of colliding two worlds here. But uh, yeah, so hopefully this is now starting to get your gears going. This kind of stuff that we teach in my course, and this is the kind of stuff that can really unlock the algorithm. But again, let's replace algorithm with audience. This unlocks the audience. Doesn't it make sense that an audience would be more interested in the thumbnail here versus the original idea? Yes. So here's, the, here's how to do this. Take a seed idea, because it always has to come from some idea, whether it's keyword research or better yet, what you know your audience might want. Brainstorm five clickable titles for it, just randomly. Some of them are gonna be very bad. Do more if you can. Pick the most intriguing one, and then just start talking about it, talking through the video with somebody, or, or, or plan out a rough outline of what that might look like, and then look at it and go, yeah, that's a banger video. That would be awesome. Or if it's not, move on to another one. All right, the thumbnail. Here are just, you can take a screenshot of this if you want, but this is a uh, general rule of thumb. Again, not all thumbnails are created equal. And no, you don't need a great thumbnail to still have a video go wild. The bill, the bill store, I mean, not bill, the, um, sorry, I see bill conversation happening in the chat. The Brady video with Leon the Lobster it wasn't the best thumbnail, but you saw the most important part, that claw, this is my claw, with the blue rubber band around it, right? And then the title is really what made that. But here are some general rules for thumbnails. The less detail, the better, because the more detail and swirly things and, and, and things that you might see and look nice on a large television do not look nice on a tiny phone where most people are watching. The rule of three, three items, N nothing more, right? You have your main subject, maybe a, a background supporting object, and maybe some text, kind of like what you see here. People also, yes, really like faces. They stop to look at faces, even though you might not be known in the space, still, having a reaction or some sort of action happening where people can see what's happening and get curious about it can work. Um, I know that in some spaces you have like the, the more like, like in Pokemon, it's the open mouth uh, Pokemon YouTuber thumbnail. They capture people's attention. Now there is a line there and people can get very tired of it. So I'm just going to let you know about that. Uh, it doesn't have to be a frame from the video. Actually, it shouldn't be. You should create a thumbnail for it. I use Canva to do that. Text to support, don't reuse the same text as in, as in the title, that's a waste. And then uh, design a few ideas per video. Design a few ideas per video. Yes, Mary, a banger video. That's like a, that's like a phrase like when somebody creates a really awesome video, it's like, oh, that video is a banger. I'm trying to feel young, just trying to, I'm trying to feel young here. <laughs> All right, so that was the click, right? The click is the first part, capturing attention right from the get-go, the title and thumbnail. Now we're gonna talk about the stick. By the way, are y'all getting some value out of this? Let me know in the chat. Give me a yes if you're good. We got maybe 25 to 30 more minutes left of content. I want to make sure. Yo, what's inside family? Thank you for that super chat. If you want to see a family of people who've been doing YouTube really well for a very long time, check out what's inside. They're great. Uh, and, and they have some really good Tesla videos as well. Anyway, let's talk about the stick. This is the hook in the retention, right? Once a person clicks on the video, then, well, we want them to stick around. And that's in two parts, the hook and the retention. So YouTube, even though you might get a click, they're not going to push out a video for you unless people are willing to stick around and watch, right? So watch time is one of the most important things you can look at when it comes to your videos. Retention time, how long are people staying through and watching? And then over time, getting better and better at retaining that viewer, right? And this is something that we do really, really well on the Pokemon channel, Deep Pocket Monster. We look at those graphs with a giant magnifying glass so we go okay at this part this is when they started trailing off let's not do that again that kind of thing right anyway here's the hook people's attention spans are shorter than ever 
as we all know from places like TikTok and Reels and Shorts. So we need to do a really good job at the beginning of a video to essentially verify for that person that what they clicked on is what they're gonna get, right? Too many times, I see a really good title thumbnail, I click on it, this is mostly from students of mine, and then the first part of the video is, hey everybody, my name is Joe, welcome back to the channel. On this channel, we do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and today, we're gonna do this, 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 but first, I'm gonna do this. And it's like, no, 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 a person clicked for that thing that you mentioned in the title and the thumbnail, why are you making them wait, right? Why are you making them wait for that, right? So what we've learned is to just get right into it as much as possible, I have some more tips for you for that. No long intros, again, if you start your videos with welcome back to the channel, you're creating those videos for your subscribers, which is good, but growth comes from people who don't know you, who have never found you, who don't even understand you or what you have to offer yet. They're there because they clicked a certain thing that you promised them on the title and the thumbnail. So starting with welcome back almost is like an immediate disconnect. An immediate, oh, I guess I have never been here. I don't know this person and they're already welcoming me back, right? No branded intro videos. Uh, yes, there are channels that do really well, but in the intro, you want to save as much time as possible to just get right into the thing and hook people in. And number three, get into the content people are looking for ASAP, right? Ross. That is a super chat. They actually donated $50 to uh, the channel and that highlights there, that's called a super chat. And that's, we're not gonna get into live streams on YouTube, um, but super chats are an amazing way for your community to support your channel. So again, thank you to uh, the What's Inside family for that. What's worth a person's time to watch your video and stick to the end, right? A question we often ask ourselves with videos is, well, what's at stake here? What is at stake? Something to think about. Why should he, why, like, what, what, why does this even matter? It's really important to ask yourself that question. A lot of times we try to avoid that because we are afraid of the no, but you want the no. You want the, well, there's nothing interesting here. So you can fix it before you publish the video, right? Retention. That is, how long can you keep a person watching a video? This is bad retention. This is good retention. And you can see on the bad side, uh, there's less people watching after 30 seconds. So it wasn't a great hook. You see a giant cliff right at the beginning there. And it starts to trail, I mean, there's, it's trailing off the entire time. This video was more opening packs, and this is something that people in the Pokemon space see all the time, right? Which is why many people, when they saw this, were like, okay, I'm out, I've seen this before, or I've seen this set before. The one on the right, which was a story we told, and um, a lot of great strategies in the beginning, which I'll share with you in just a second. Look at that, it's mostly flat. And then even at the end, it still continues through. And then right, right at the end, you, you see a cliff because that's when the climax happened, the result happened of this video and story, and then people left, right? It just shows you people do stick around until they get the answer. So really, really working hard to try to get this graph as, as, as flat as possible is, is really, really important. All right. So here's how you can increase retention. A bunch of different ways. You can screenshot this if you'd like. Stories. Stories are an amazing way to keep people just watching longer. If you get good at storytelling, telling stories, then it's just gonna help your YouTube channel, right? And then starting the art of storytelling, a story arc, the hero's journey, the challenges, the struggles, the overcoming of those challenges. You see it on my YouTube videos on, on, on Pokemon. Pokemon of all things, cartoons on cardboard, shiny cardboard. You're still able to tell stories. I would say every channel and every niche there are ways to tell stories. Not every video is gonna be this gigantic epic hero's journey, but every video can still tell a story. It's the difference between, let's say you are a information YouTuber to help people with Facebook advertising. It's the difference between, um, you know, a video titled um, Facebook's recent algorithm changes for advertisers versus um, I test Facebook's new algorithm with a $200 advertisement. Did it work? See the difference? Now I'm putting $200 at stake. I'm not saying you have to put money at stake every time, but the idea being the story now is not, here's the changes from YouTube, which literally every other YouTuber in that space is gonna do versus let's put these things to the test. And then while I'm sharing this story unlocking, I'm also teaching at the same time, right? That's the big difference there. Create a reason to stay until the end. What's at stake? B-roll footage. B-roll footage might be footage like, um, you know, that is where you have a video playing 
like you're talking to the camera. This is A roll, me talking to the camera. B roll might be me going to keynote or me going to showing off a product in a more slow-mo fashion or some sort of supporting video while my voice is still going over. That's B roll. Adding B roll, mixing it up a little bit like I'm doing here holds people's attention, right? We still have 733 people watching and it's because I'm moving back and forth. It's not just me talking to the camera. There's, there's movement there, right? So that helps. Text on the screen can help a lot as well. And inserting text to support the things you're talking about, you don't have to caption every single word. Uh, YouTube will automatically caption some stuff for you, which is great. But text on the screen to support the, if I have like big idea, and I might have big idea pop up on the screen right when I say that because the video is about a big idea, something to look at, a pattern interrupt, something that kind of keeps things going, keeps things moving. The easiest way to do this would be to actually go to different locations. Maybe if there is a top five something post, not all five things are happening at this view. Maybe another one happens at another view. I mean, you wanna see just how impactful that can be? Hey, I just changed the camera angle. You see how just that immediately changes things because you've been so used to seeing something in a different angle. I set up that camera just for that demonstration, by the way. Uh, excuse me, but hopefully you can see changing an angle. Cha zooming in a little bit, moving outside for point number two. All that stuff can do a really, really good job. Thank you, Fishy Blocks, for uh, welcome to Team Flynn, by the way. Um, quick transitions between parts, right? And then also read your analytics, like I said. So that can really help with keeping people watching. All right, let's talk about monetization here. Let's talk about monetization. I like that bold. It's not movement, it's value, right? <laughs> Keith says, slide again, love your face, but okay, let me go back in case you want to screenshot that for later. Mike says, lighting is much better in the direct angle. It is. This is not set up for lighting, the other one, as you can saw. All right. There we go. Let's talk about monetization. A lot of people commenting on my helmets in the back. Bring your personality into your videos, right? You don't even, like, I'm not even, well, I am mentioning them now, but you can just have some of you in your videos and people will follow you for you, right? Your vibe attracts your tribe, as I often say. All right, let's talk about monetization. YouTube ads, which is essentially run through a program called Google AdSense, you can only connect that and join the YouTube partner program for your regular videos at 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. When you reach that, I know it sounds like a lot, but honestly, I mean, Matt Wolf started three months ago. He already has 100,000 subscribers and millions of hours of watch time. So it can happen with one video even. So it's not a lot, but it'll get you going and motivate you to hopefully unlock this. When you join that program, you then now have access to ads. You can choose to have ads on or off in your videos or not, but most people nowadays have them on because most of us are still used to seeing those ads anyway. And what YouTube does is it essentially rents out ad space on your videos to companies who wanna get in front of your particular audience. And you get a rev share of how much those advertisers pay. And that's called a CPM or cost per uh, cost per milli or thousand. So for every thousand views, you get a certain dollar amount from YouTube um, and it's 70% of what the advertisers pay. So YouTube keeps 30, you keep 70. And this stuff adds up over time, especially if you create videos that are evergreen and your library stacks on top of each other, for example. Here is a shot from the Pat Flynn channel, the lifetime revenue from the Pat Flynn channel. Um, I will say that the Pokemon one is already here, uh, but this is lifetime since 2009. Quarter million dollars from YouTube, just YouTube ads alone. But I will say this YouTube channel, the Pat Flynn one, has made a lot more revenue from a lot of the stuff that I'm about to share with you. And what I mean is things like brand deals. So a brand deal is where a company is not paying YouTube, but they're paying you directly. And there are agencies that you can work with to do brand deals. But a company in your niche might want to get in front of your audience and you do a brand deal. That could mean a 30 to 60 second ad for that um, for that company or that or the product that they're promoting. They pay you a certain number of dollars and then they have an expectation that you'll put their product in your video. It might be a display in the background and not necessarily something that you take a break to talk about. So you'll have to do that on an individual basis, but brand deals can be very, very uh, great. On the Pokemon channel now, we're commanding now five figures per video for any brand deals that happen. Didn't start out that way, but once the audience came and once the audience um, you know, grew, then I was able to command those numbers. But you can start out small 
build a relationship with a brand and grow with them, which is really amazing. Next, you can do affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing means promoting or recommending an other person or another company's product. This is a very popular way to generate income, even without a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And it's because you can connect with another company and they're not paying you up front necessarily. They're paying you when you convert a new customer for them. And so that company could be any company. Many companies have affiliate programs, referral programs, partner programs. They will pay you a commission essentially when you convert a customer for them. They'll give you a special link such that when people go through that link, it's actually like tied to you so they can track it and you can track it. And then you get paid for that. Nolan, thank you so much for that. No need to do super chats here, everybody, but I appreciate you for that, Nolan. That's really helpful. Uh, that's amazing. You just gave me a new idea for a new video. Thanks. Hey, well, hey, mutual beneficial. You, you supported me. Thank you for that. Again, no need for super chats, but I want to talk about this video in particular because this video is about a tool called Descript. Descript is an amazing tool for podcasters and people who create videos. It does some really fancy things with editing, but it also has this tool in it that allows you to upload your voice and then you can type out words and it will say it in your voice. It's actually really cool and also really scary at the same time. So I shared this in this video. This video saw over a million views in less than a year. This audio editing tool deep faked my voice, actually useful or scary, right? And you can see right there in the description, patflin.com slash descript. That is my affiliate link. It's very important when you're doing affiliate marketing to be upfront that that is a thing, the FDA no, not the Food and Drug Administration. The FTC, well, the FDA is another thing. Um, the FTC in the US requires that if you're doing affiliate marketing, you need to be upfront with people that that is an affiliate offer so that a consumer knows that there's sp something specific you're getting back and can make their own decision about it. So anyway, not the FDA, the FTC, all right? So this video went viral because it has a very catchy title and thumbnail. Right? You can see the thumbnail uh, there as well. It has an affiliate link in it for other people who wanted to get access to it. Since this video came out, you can see the commissions. Total value, $35,000 down there at the bottom for over 3,000 people who clicked through and then actually paid to get access to this tool. So I didn't ask anybody to pay for anything. I just showed off a really cool product and how to use it. And uh, check this out it's generated $35,000 since then uh, in about a couple of years, which is really, really amazing. So I just wanted to share this with you because there are opportunities to generate income without even having to get YouTube to pay you. There are products that might be helpful to your audience. And the cool thing about YouTube specifically is it's a video platform. So you could show people how to use these products. People are looking to videos before they buy these products. And if you can create a really nice review, I've done microphone re reviews before, I've done reviews about different products, I've, I've done reviews about other people's courses even, to share my experience through them. And then if people are interested and they like how you did what you did, they're likely to click that affiliate link and then you can go from there, all right? Okay, so I wanna ask you, what was the most helpful thing you learned today. We talked about a lot of different things, but give me one item and one item alone in the chat right now, because I want to see exactly what was of interest to you. I know we're all at different levels. Some of us starting out for the first time, sort of some some of us, you know, have had channels for a while. Some of us with millions of subscribers, by the way, like the uh, What's Inside family. And again, thank you for that super chat to, to both of you who offer that. But I'm curious, what was the most interesting and most valuable thing that you learned today? I hope that you can take away something amazing here, but I'm not done yet because I also want to ask you permission to tell you a little bit about my YouTube course. I mentioned this in the beginning, shouldn't be a surprise. We have an amazing YouTube course for anybody who wants to go a little bit deeper and a way for you to get involved that is actually something that we've never offered before with this course. But I wanna read some of these first. Get to the video right away, title and thumbnail, th uh, thumbnail, title, storytelling, key, storytelling and faces, hook and retention, title and thumbnail, Decide the video first and the title before filming your video. Uh, storytelling in a niche. Yes. Awesome. Figure out your audience and niche first, says Danielle. Um, figure out who I'm creating videos for. Absolutely, JP. Awesome. Okay, I'm getting some yeses here as well. So, so thank you so much. I'm going to tell you about YouTube from scratch because YouTube definitely, as you know, is a huge opportunity. A lot of us were like, you know, uh, where is YouTube going? Is it going to die? It's actually getting stronger. Right? It's getting better. YouTube is putting more resources into it. We as creators are seeing that as well. 
And it can be super overwhelming. There's a lot that goes into YouTube, right? But the way that we teach it in our course is to reduce the overwhelm. We actually don't talk about all the things with YouTube because you don't need all of that, right? The goal here is to get to a thousand subscribers in as quickly as possible. So I wanna introduce our newest online course, which is called YouTube from scratch, open again. It's open again now in a very interesting way. And again, the cool thing about this is it's offered in a way that, that kind of takes you along the journey. I actually create a new channel, not the Pokemon channel, a brand new one, and you kind of follow along in the process. And again, the goal is to remove the confusion and get you to a thousand subscribers on your channel, or if you have a channel already, it's a two X your growth, the two X your growth, which is really, really important to do. And this course is really amazing because it actually walks you step by step through that process. It has more examples, more ways that you can pull a lot of what we talk about and a lot more. And we actually go through, and this is, uh, I gotta give a shout out to my partner, Caleb. Caleb is my videographer. We created this course together, YouTube from scratch. And it was amazing because we launched it for the first time at the end of last year. And it's only been a, it's only been a few months now and we're already getting several results. People saying they're getting three times, five times, 10 times the amount of views that they often got before creating their channel and starting their channels and getting to a thousand subs within a relatively short period of time, which is really amazing. So you can get access to the entire course for only 499, right? This is the price of all of our courses, by the way, $499. And this is a one-time payment, which is really cool. But we're doing something new that we've never done before. And this is gonna blow your mind. Or you can get access to the whole course by itself. You can get access to it instantly for $499 or you can get access to the All Access Pass. The All Access Pass was launched in 2022, and here's what this includes. You get access to YouTube from scratch and our entire course library. There's over a dozen courses, Power Up Podcasting, Affiliate Marketing, Email Marketing, Webinars, How to Run the Finances in Your Business, etc. You can get access to an active community of other like-minded entrepreneurs just like you. And studies show that when you're going through these courses, and doing things together with other people, you're 60% more likely to complete these things. And that's really important. You get access to my team. There is a guide to help you along the way. Just access to the courses alone would not be enough. Actually, that might be confusing because it's too much information. So we actually give you pathways through them. You graduate from this course and then you go to this course, but then you go to this course and then you go to this course. So we have pathways through these courses to help you no matter where you're at in your business. And the best thing is you have these accelerators. An accelerator inside of the All Access Pass are classes of people who go through these courses together. And so I wanna ask you, what would you value the price of this at? Knowing that a single course is $499, thank you, Trevor, he says, I'm in All Access Pass and it's totally worth it. Okay, what would you value the price of this offer for all the courses, the community, my team, the pathways, and the accelerators? many people who I've shared this with are like probably thousands of dollars. Well, the truth is you can get access to all of that, including YouTube from scratch for just $59 a month billed quarterly, which is an absolute steal. And yes, comparatively, we're losing money by not promoting the one time. But the goal here is to get you in here quickly, to lower the barrier and to give you access to more things that will help you along the way, i.e. the community and these accelerators right? This is where you want to go because the next accelerator starts on March 6th. This is why this presentation, other than providing value to you, exists. YouTube from scratch accelerator begins on March 6th. Ashley is already there waiting for you. She's on our team. She's our curriculum director uh, or curriculum creator on the team. And you're going to be able to go through YouTube from scratch together with other students. We already have people who have access to all access pass ready for that but I want you to get in there too. If this is of interest to you to go through it with other people, you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash YTFS, YTFS, you'll be able to get access to it. And I want you to get in before March 6th because there's a community waiting for you there. So hopefully you can see if you do want more help, you might be, you might be fine on your own, which is totally cool. I don't want to make this a hard sell or pressure you, but if you know you might need some help, you want to go through this with other people, you want to get guidance from my team, that's a really ridiculously, really, really good offer that is basically, we wanted to make it a no-brainer if you know you wanna do this. Again, if you don't, I'm not gonna try to change your mind. And again, if you already have other things that you know you're working on, then you should focus on that. But if you know that this is what you want and you want this kind of help at this kind of level to help you fast forward your results, then this is where you definitely wanna go. 
you want to go to smartpassiveincome.com slash YTFS. And again, much, much more massive value than getting it at the one-time price. But I know some of you still will want to get it at the one-time price because you just want that alone and do it yourself and you're kind of on your own and that's totally fine too. So I'm going to spend at, word, at exactly the hour right now, which is really amazing. So I understand if you have to go, but I hope that you go here. March 6th is when our accelerator for YouTube from scratch smarts. How does that start? How does that work? Well, you get in and actually if you go to uh, YouTube from scratch's website, you'll go here. And then if you scroll down, actually you see me and Caleb there. But if you scroll down, you'll see this is where we have those offers and you can choose either one, the one that makes sense for you. And um, you can even click on what's included at the top to get there as well. But when you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash YTFS, that's what you'll see. Now, the way the accelerator works, it's really amazing the way this was designed because we've run boot camps before, which were thousands of dollars, where for like eight weeks, for example, you'd have to show up two times a week on a call for two hours. And it was like intense. It was like university, right? But we wanted a happy medium that would allow for you and your busy schedule to still fit this in. So what we have now is community powered asynchronous learning. What that means is you're able to come in and yes, there is a number of lessons you need to go through each week, but you don't need to be on a call to get those lessons because those lessons already exist in the community. You get through them, you turn in your homework and your work so that you're making progress. And then there's office hours in case you want to get access to somebody and ask questions to, but you're doing this. There's a community. You can ask questions, support each other, hold each other accountable, all that kind of stuff as well. So it's like a perfect medium between the DIY, you're totally on your own. And like, you have to show up to class every day at this time, because if you're like me, I mean, you're totally busy, right? So again, check it out. Here's the link below, smartpassiveincome.com slash YTFS. So yes, $59 a month is what it would come down to, but we pay. We, we ask you to pay quarterly because that way you can actually at least invest in yourself three months to get through a bunch of stuff and see how awesome this is. And if you find out that it's not for you, then it's not for you and that's okay. But we wanted to make the barrier to entry as low as possible. Yes, so quarterly it's 179, but that comes down to 59 per month build quarterly. No, 50, not 59 per quarter, 59 per month, but it's build quarterly, which is, it's just a fancy way to say, because um, we can understand monthly better than quarterly, but we bill you quarterly, right? So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna be here for the next five minutes to answer any high level questions that you might have. Uh, it could be about the course, the accelerator, or about YouTube in general. I saw some questions earlier about uh, shorts and live streams. I'm not gonna get into that. We actually don't even get into that in the course because we want the focus to be on these longer form videos that can help you get in front of more people. There are a lot of people who I know who are doing really well on YouTube with shorts. And they literally have hundreds of thousands of subscribers just from shorts. But here's the thing. Those aren't super loyal audiences like you would get with longer form videos. Yes, you can grow fast. The monetization on shorts is far different. And you're it's gonna be much harder to convert those people into something like an email list. And we do teach that as well, how to get from a YouTube video to an email list so you can serve them in different kinds of ways as well. So let me know, first of all, thank you. I saw John just signed up, which is awesome. Ross is in as well, got it, 179 per quarter, that's awesome. The Quaint Guardian says, do you have an email list for DPM? If not, how do you own your member list? Cheers. Um, I do have an email list for Deep Pocket Monster and it was actually created in the older way that we did uh, giveaways. We now do giveaways on Google using Google Forms. However, when you do it that way, you don't get to keep that list. Although I have those emails, it would be actually illegal for me to send emails out to all those people because they didn't opt in to get emails back. They opted into a giveaway. So the way that you uh, diversify in addition to an email list is to get people onto like an Instagram or TikTok or some other way such that if one thing were to fail or uh, have an algorithm change, then the other things can help pick it up. But the truth is an email list does exist for Deep Pocket Monster and I do collect it, especially from people who either purchase something like merch uh, and then of course the card party, which is an event I'm holding this year, uh, there's an email list for that as well. Cool, how many channels does one start to do different topics? You know, I would start with one channel that's for a, a specific audience, an audience that can binge watch the content that you come out with, right? That's how I would frame it. Because in many cases, when I talk to people who want to start a channel who have different interests, um, they want to talk about 
three different things for three different audiences. Now, you will see some channels out there of people who talk about all kinds of random stuff, who still do really well. And that's because over time, they've built up an audience who now has fallen in love with them. And now they're at a point where they can do kind of whatever they want. And it can be, it's very difficult to start that way. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult to start that way. Case in point, a photographer named F Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon is a photographer, professional photographer, who did video or videos about photography using specific camera equipment, using specific uh, apps, using specific tricks. He had a very famous video go live where the thumbnail was actually a close-up view of a camera lens with a knife on it. Very, I mean, it, you see that thumbnail and you're like, is he cutting the lens? Kind of clickbaity, but you click it and it's like, no, you're using the reflection of a knife to add some lens flare into your camera work which is really cool. And so anyway, he got famous for a lot of those videos, but then over time just started doing vlogging where he could basically do whatever he wants now because people love his personality. They love him. They love, and, and he's also doing some other things now. He has a Instagram about leather work. I mean, you can kind of unlock anything you want after you build a loyal audience on that first thing. But, that, but I would start niche first. The riches are in the niches. Cynthia says, does a course go over FTC regulations as well? Um, if you get access to the all access pass and you do the affiliate marketing course through that, through the monetization pathway, there is information about the regulations and laws. I mean, especially when you talk about Amazon it has their own set of rules as well. Um, does the course go over how to video yourself without a videographer? Yes. In fact, Caleb has several, Caleb's my videographer. He does a lesson in the course that specifically goes over different ways to film yourself, right? how to record your screen, how to record B-roll, how to record yourself, how to do a voiceover, all those kinds of elements that you might need. Again, fair warning, you could do all of them at the beginning. Pick one or two styles that make sense for you. Maybe you start out with a video that looks like this, but then you add B-roll every once in a while where you're talking about something like, hey, get access to the all, aspect, all access pass, and then you switch over to here. You actually walk through with Caleb how to edit. So if you don't know how to edit, you'll get a very, very good fundamental lesson on how to do editing so that you can at least get some videos out there. And over time, you can refine. You'll also be able to find people to help you with that as well. So to be clear, the YouTube from Scratch class is a one-time payment of $4.99 for life. And all access is $5.99 for just one year and renewed annually. Uh, technically, yes, that's true. However, you also get access to all of other courses, the community, the accelerators, all that kind of thing. So I know some people who are like, no, Pat, I don't want to get distracted by any of that other stuff. I don't need like guidance, like I can do this on my own. That's what a one time would likely make sense. Bass Fishing HQ. I got Ty here. You mentioned a couple of Bass Fishing YouTube channels, but which one is your favorite? I mean, Bass Fishing HQ. I mean, Ty, you can you can attest to this. Uh, Bass Fishing HQ is definitely my favorite uh, fishing YouTube channel. And he recently, he and I got in contact with each other on Instagram and was very inspired by Deep Pocket Monster. So I gave him some tips, a lot of the same stuff I teach in the course. And um, I mean, you can share it yourself, Ty, if you want, but uh, one of your latest videos that you did put more time into, right? You made the decision, which was really smart to not feel like you had to create a video every single day or even every single week, but you put the time and effort into the quality of a video and you did one, it was like this, I think the title was this bass fishing study changes everything. And if you're a bass fisherman or just, interested in fish in general, you're going to want to click that, right? Because what does it change? A study? What study? And the thumbnail is a giant bass being measured. And so if you're a fisherman, you have to click on that. That video, I think, now has nearly a million views. And it's definitely the top performing video that you've had um, right out of the gate. So uh, well done to you, uh, Tyler. Don't get him started on fishing. <laughs> yeah, you just did. Good question. If we have purchased other courses, is there a discount? Uh, Bass Fishing HQ said you are 100% correct, and I came up with the title first. Um, if you are a course student of mine already, and you want to get access to the DIY, there is a student discount. It's the same student discount that I that I always shared. So if you heard it before, there it is. I'm not going to share it here in case people who aren't students use it. But you can email help at teamspi.com, and you can get that discount. If you're already an existing course student, and you're getting access to the DIY version, the 499 version, then we will we will honor that 10% discount because you're already a student. But the all access pass, which is way more involved for our team, um, we feel it's a very fair price at uh, what comes down to $59 a month or build $179 per quarter. Ross says, this is great info. Appreciate your sharing of experience, opportunity to grow with others. 
uh, my, or with others um, to grow. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, we are 10 minutes now over the hour, so I'm going to close up shop. And I just want, once again, want to say thank you to everybody who's already joined up. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you on March 6th when we start that accelerator. Whether you, um, you know, can get quick into it or not, I mean, you'll always have access to it and all the other courses there as well. And uh, my team is looking forward to seeing you there. So again, thank you so much. Last question here. Do you see social media outreach as essential to building audience? Or can you build audience simply with good strategy YouTube like you've shared? Social media is a great way to further connect with your audience. As far as growth, I find that it's very difficult to grow a separate channel on social media because Twitter wants to keep people on Twitter. Facebook wants to keep people on Facebook, right? So oftentimes when we think we're going to grow by sharing our YouTube video on social media, it doesn't work because uh, those channels will actually throttle its reach. And also you're already sharing it with people who already know you exist. So I would spend more time on creating better videos and then talking to people on social to get them to know you a little bit better. That's how I would use it. So again, thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate you. See you on the inside, says John. Thank you. Um, and again, no super pressure on the offer here. It's there if you want it. We're here to help. We've been serving people with this course and now we're serving it in a much more meaningful manner. Uh, Ashley's there waiting for you. And um, if you don't get involved, that's okay too. I just appreciate you for being here and I hope that you go back and watch and you can take away something from this that you can then uh, actually implement and see results from. So uh, maybe it'll take some time for you to see that this stuff actually works and you can come with us later, but our accelerator starts on the 6th and I hope we'll see you there. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate you and have an amazing day. Thanks.